same time Harvey Milk was leading the movement forward in San Francisco, activists in Boulder were also pushing for change. Led by Boulder's first African-American mayor, Penfield Tate, the city council passed the state's first gay and lesbian equal rights ordinance. It was also the first of its kind in the country. We had in Boulder in 1974 the very first municipal election about gay rights anywhere in the United States. Unfortunately, our city fathers and mothers were ahead of the populace because we ended up losing that vote by almost a two to one margin. During the same time that we were looking at including sexual orientation in the Human Rights Ordinance in Boulder, we had a very progressive city clerk. Her name was Cleela Rorex. She was prepared when, when same-sex couples came to her office to give them licenses. And in fact, Cleela Rorex gave six same-sex couples licenses to marry in this state. Boulder finally covered sexual orientation in, a, in another municipal election. That was in 1987. We won that election by just uh, literally just under 300 votes. Because of the hard work of activists in Boulder and other communities, by the early 1990s, several critical municipal and statewide laws had been enacted. Then came the right-wing backlash. <laughs> In 1992, Amendment 2 passed, and we had a constitutional amendment that said gay and lesbian people could not be protected from discrimination. It was open season. And fortunately, you know, we fought that all the way to the Supreme Court and won. Former Colorado Supreme Court Justice Gene Dubofsky led the legal team and successfully argued the case Romer versus Evans before the United States Supreme Court. Perhaps the most memorable section of Justice Kennedy's opinion read, Amendment 2 classifies homosexuals not to further a proper legislative end, but to make them unequal to everyone else. This Colorado cannot do. A state cannot so deem a class of persons a stranger to its laws. While the long political and legal fight to challenge Amendment 2 drained financial resources, it also inspired local leaders to find a way to rebuild both financial and social capital in the LGBT community. And the Open Door Fund was born. And then I saw this little announcement that the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force had some grant money available through the Tides Foundation. And I began thinking about that and talking to some of our board members about perhaps applying for that. Before we even applied, I called around in Colorado to other community foundations and other folks and said, would you want to also apply? And it turned out we were the only ones who decided to apply. And it turned out furthermore that we are probably the only group that then once we got the money, put it into a permanent endowment and have that there as a resource in perpetuity. And I'm guessing that we may be one of a very few in the nation who have done that, and I'm so proud of that. With the establishment of the Open Door Fund, LGBT equality took a big step forward in Boulder County. But our neighbors to the north had elected arch-conservative Marilyn Musgrave to the Colorado State Legislature in 1994. And in 2002, Musgrave went to Washington as the U.S. representative for the Fort Collins Berthet Loveland District. She went on to become one of the architects of the Defense of Marriage Act and a darling of Bush and Rove. Colorado entrepreneur Tim Gill, founder of the Gill Foundation, decided it was time to get into politics and started the Gill Action Fund. One of the really fortunate things is that a candidate that's bad on gay issues is often bad on choice, they're often bad on the environment, and so it's pretty easy to get a coalition of people to try to take a candidate out when they're that bad. And we've seen wins for gay and lesbian rights in five or six states um, in the last couple of electoral cycles that have really been because we formed coalitions with all the people that we talked for years about forming coalitions with, but weren't always as good as we should have been. In 2006, the battle for marriage equality came to Colorado, and local activists worked hard to ensure that Referendum I was on the ballot. By this time, we had started a, we meaning not only PFLAG, but there were a number of allied organizations. And more than lobbying, they went out on the streets, as many of us did, and to get signatures, to get sh make sure that this referendum was on the ballot. 
And so we did a lot of one-to-one -one talking uh, to people, and, and that was an exciting time as well, and, and a bitter defeat for those of us who had really worked hard. And surely, uh, it's something that we are not yet ready to let go of. Though marriage equality has not yet been realized, Barney Frank and Tammy Baldwin are now joined by U.S. Representative Jared Polis, representing Boulder and neighboring counties. The district that elected me to represent them doesn't have a single gay bar in the entire district. So it's not uh, one of these gay mecca districts and uh, you know here like we have Denver, Colorado, yeah. New York or San Francisco, the places that you would expect uh, would have a sizable gay electorate. Uh, here, you know, in this district, we don't have a single gay bar. Of course, we have gays and lesbians that, you know, quietly live their lives like everybody else. But um, it really wasn't that much of an issue in the campaign. And uh, the people uh, really chose the candidate that they felt would work the best for them on getting the economy going, on ending the war, on protecting the environment. Uh, and that's what our message was. And I'm honored that they chose me to represent them. For more than 40 years, activists in Boulder have been working to create political, legal, and social change. Today, we are one of only 13 states that have laws banning discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. And our Community Foundation is one of only 15 organizations in the country that have endowed LGBT funds. I think when everyone is respected and all voices are heard, it's a better community and the Open Door Fund's done lots of good work to make that happen.